Well, thank you, Charles, for that very kind introduction, and thank you, Cumberland Region Tomorrow, Nashville Area MPO, and the Tennessee Department of Transportation for partnering on this project and this effort. Um, as you all know, for Nashville and Middle Tennessee Region to remain an attractive place for residents, workers, and visitors, we have to stay focused on the three pitches. And this is what I've been talking about since I started running for mayor, and I'm glad that Robin's uh, polling really confirmed this. The three things that we, we three pitches you got to hit every day are public education, public safety, and economic development. And those things are connected. When you have a region that has good schools, you're going to keep people living in your city and in our community, and you're going to attract new businesses to it. And when you have a safe region, kids are going to go to school, they're going to graduate, and they're going to prosper. And when you have economic development, um, that will come when you have the other two, good schools and public safety. They're all related to each other, and they're all absolutely essential. We all know that Middle Tennessee is the economic engine for our state. Uh, people are moving here from all over the country. They're coming by the thousands from Atlanta, from Los Angeles, from Chicago, and Detroit. But everyone who lives here knows that our affordable cost of living and good salaries are only the tip of the iceberg of what we have to offer. One million more people are expected to move to this region by 2035, and they're coming for a lot of reasons. For well-paying jobs, safe streets, and schools, and much more. As I said time and time again, they're, becoming, they're coming here because there's an energy in Nashville, in the region. And I truly believe that while things are good right now, that the best days for this region still lie ahead. This in terms of the smackdown, Robin. <clears throat> We started the year off pretty good when the New York Times had an article um, saying that Nashville was the new it city, uh, which is a great thing to have happen. And people ask me what it means, and I say, I don't know, but just enjoy it. It's good to be the it city. It's... But the one that really got to me was um, Condé Nast magazine, which came out with a story in January saying there are five cities in the world you have to visit in 2013, in the world. That's Seoul, South Korea, Amsterdam in the Netherlands, Toronto, Ontario, New Orleans, and Nashville, Tennessee. So I know what you're all thinking. You're thinking, how did Seoul and Amsterdam make the list? Uh, I don't know. I think we made the list because of our focus on the things that really matter. And when we talk about competing with Austin, and we do talk about it a lot, because we directly compete almost every day on economic development issues. We compete for attracting some of the same people. It's a friendly competition, and Austin is a great city. I was there just about this time last year for a, a food festival that I thought was spectacular. But one of the things I tell folks about Austin is, and another one of our competitors, Charlotte, is it shouldn't be lost on any of us that both of those cities have in the last three years started light rail systems. That both of those cities have moved very aggressively along the track of, of building mass transit. And that is a commitment they've made that increases the quality of life, increases their economic uh, competitiveness, and that has helped them. So we'll accept the challenge. We're a little bit behind on that one, but we're going to catch up. Um, I would also tell you that just uh, yesterday, and it was announced today by our chamber, um, that um, we have uh, the Middle Tennessee region, the Nashville MSA, the Bureau of Labor Statistics just put out the 2012 release of annual job data for all metropolitan areas in the United States. And the good news is that this region, us all up here, ranked number one in the country for job growth in 2012 adding roughly 30,000 new jobs. And yesterday, the Bloomberg rankings, as was mentioned, ranked us as a boom town. And our unemployment now is about 6%, and, and that is a, good, a, a great achievement. But as we, um, as we move forward, I think the critical issue for us to work on now is transportation. And it was, it was enlightening to see the polling. You, see, you saw where transportation ranks in the polls. And I, I would disregard that as another challenge. When I first started running for mayor back in uh, early 07, I was the last candidate in the race. 
and the city paper did this poll, this uh, internet poll. And it was not scientific, but you know, people would push their buttons and, and vote on the mayor's race. And so the, I got the poll, it was published in the paper, and I was last, and I was actually about two or three percent. And I have a distinct memory of breakfast one morning when I, Ann and I were talking about it, and our daughter, who was then probably in eighth grade, heard us talking about the poll, and then I showed her the poll. And she said, Dad, there's still time to get out. <laughs> That's not the advice I'm giving you today. Look, we're growing fast. As I said, we are going to continue to grow until we're about the size of the Denver region by 2035. And one of the most important issues we face as a region is transportation. You know, this is a difficult issue. There is a huge piece, and I think this is reflected in the poll, there's a huge piece of public education that is required. You have to, we have to talk about how this can be done with funding from the federal, state, and local levels, about how there will be benefits in the quality of life for people, not only in air quality, but most importantly, in reducing their cost of living by removing the need to have multiple cars or to give people the options of days of not driving their cars. It will relieve traffic congestion. It will make our city more pedestrian friendly and more walkable. All of those issues have to be presented to the public. And they have to be presented in a way that the public um, finds compelling. And then we have to meet the challenges that will come from opponents to mass transit. And believe me, having worked now on the AMP, there will be people who will say it's too expensive. There will be people who will say that boy, if you build this, that's change. And I'm not certain how I feel about change. And there will be folks who you expect to be with you and you'll, they'll, you'll say, well, yeah, but just do it on a different route. Just don't do it on, in my area of the city. And there'll be folks who'll say, I'll never use it. I've got two cars and I'm gonna stick with my car, right? It's not gonna be easy. And it's going, to, it's going to need to involve a commitment, like a commitment that has been made only to a few other projects in, in our governments. We have to really work hard to get this done, and now is the time. President Kennedy put it best when he said, there are risks and costs to a program of action, but they are far less than the long-range risks and costs of comfortable inaction. If we do nothing, we will have gridlock. If we do nothing, we will lose our economic edge because people can't get around. If we do nothing, we'll no longer be the place that attracts all the smart young people because they're not going to want to be in a place with a low quality of life. So we need to go out of this meeting today I believe, committed to regional transit, committed to transit within our own counties, but work together to move forward. Because if we don't, if we don't, people are going to look back at these, this time and they're going to say, why didn't you do the right thing? Right? Another way to look at it, and you know, quoting Shakespeare, the Battle of Agincourt, when the king says, and they're about to go fight a few hundred English are about to go fight thousands of French people. And the king says, people are going to look back on this day for those of us who fought for the right thing, that we were the lucky few who got to fight for something that really meant something. That we were the lucky ones who got to move the ball forward and got to improve our communities and got to make our cities better places to live. So that's the way I look at it. All right, we may be down on the polls right now, but we're moving up. And we're the lucky ones because we get the honor, the honor and the opportunity to actually do something important that's going to make a difference in the lives of people right now and for many, many years to come. So that's my call to action. Thank you.